The aim of this video is to discuss the importance of uncertainty in machine learning and explain what we mean by aleatoric and epistemic uncertainty. So let's take a look at an example. Consider we have a trained machine learning model that is a farm animal classifier. For this input image, the classifier correctly identifies the animal as a cow. Similarly, the model is able to identify a sheep and also a pig. For the sake of this example, let's say the model is trained such that it only is able to classify images for these three farm animals, i.e. cows, sheep and pigs. So in reality, the model doesn't directly predict the classification of the input image, but it instead returns a probability distribution over the three classes using something like a softmax after the final layer. In this example, the models assign a probability of 0.8 of the image being a cow, 0.05 of being a sheep, and 0.15 of being a pig. So the natural conclusion is that the image is a cow because it has the greatest probability assigned to it. We can see similar probability distributions returned by the model for the other two input images, where the classified animal has the greatest probability assigned to it. Okay, now let's focus on this example of a cow. Let's consider we have another image for which it is quite unclear on what farm animal is being portrayed in the image. So when the image is passed through the farm animal classifier, we get this probability distribution. A probability of 0.35 for cow, 0.32 for sheep, and 0.33 for pig. Hence, the model concludes the input image is a cow because once again the cow class has the greatest probability assigned to it. However, as a human, I am not convinced by this result because the probabilities of the three animal classes are very similar and it just happens that in this instance the probability of the cow class is slightly larger than the other two classes. In contrast, we can say the model is fairly confident about its prediction as a cow class probability in the first example, as the cow class probability is substantially larger than the probabilities assigned to the other two classes. So, we can make the statement that for the second model, the prediction is uncertain. Hence, it is sometimes better for a model to say, I don't know instead of trying to choose one of the classes. And hence we begin to care about measures of uncertainty in a model in order to see whether a model should say I don't know or return one of the three classes. Well, one simple way of finding the uncertainty of the final discrete prob probability distribution would be to calculate the entropy. Greater the entropy, greater the uncertainty. However, we, we would only be finding the total uncertainty. And the total uncertainty is composed of two different types of uncertainty. Total uncertainty can be thought of as a combination of data uncertainty and model uncertainty. The data uncertainty arises due to uncertainness in the actual data, while model uncertainty arises due to the uncertainty in the learned parameters of the trained model. The technical name given to data uncertainty is aleatoric uncertainty and the technical name for model uncertainty is epistemic uncertainty or even knowledge uncertainty. So what we're interested in here is finding out how much data uncertainty and model uncertainty contribute to the total uncertainty of the prediction. In order to understand how we can find data and model uncertainties, we need to visualize the predicted probability distribution a little better. Let's draw a three-dimensional axis where each axis corresponds to the probability assigned to a class. 
Here, the x-axis is for the probability of being a cow, the y-axis is the probability of being a sheep, and the z-axis is the probability of being a pig. As these are probabilities, the largest value on any axis is 1. The aim is to represent the discrete probability distribution over the three classes as a geometric coordinate. But because we are working with a probability distribution, we know the probability of cow plus probability of sheep plus the probability of pig must equal 1. Therefore, all possible discrete probability distributions over the three classes are constrained to exist on this plane, where the x, y and z coordinates must sum to 1. This plane is known as a simplex. So let's see what this means for our examples. With the cow image, we plot the cow at the coordinate with x value 0.8, y value 0.05, and z value 0.15, which is about here. We can do a similar plot for the sheep image, and then a similar plot for the pig image. We can finally take the weird image and also plot it onto the simplex. It is clear visually that for input images where we are more confident about, they lie close to the vertices of the triangle, while more uncertain images tend to lie closer to the center of the triangle, which is equidistant from the three classes. Now let's just focus on one image of the cow to see if we can understand data and model uncertainty better. The first thing I like to do is draw the simplex in a 2D plane, so that each vertex corresponds to one class. As before, I can plot the output probability distribution for the cow image onto the simplex. What we have to remember is that the output probability distribution the model returns is based on a given trained version of the model, i.e. based on the seed used to initialize the model parameters before training. So we can train the same model using different seed initializations and evaluate these models on the same input image. Applying the seed2 trained model on the same cow image, we can see we get a similar probability distribution at the output as the seed trained one model. We can also plot on this probability distribution, this probability distribution on the simplex. Now let's repeat the process for a seed3 trained model and for a seed4 trained model. This collection of trained models is called an ensemble, and each of these individual models are called ensemble members. We can continue to grow the ensemble and plot the output probability distributions onto the simplex. We are now in a position to deduce the model and data uncertainty. What we can do first is to take the mean of all the ensemble members and plot this point onto the simplex. This might be something like 0.82 for cow, 0.06 for sheep, and 0.12 for pig. As before, we can define the total uncertainty in our prediction to be the entropy of the ensemble average distribution. But the fact that we have an ensemble of points instead of a single point on the simplex means we can do better than just finding the total uncertainty. Instead of just plotting the mean, we can fit something like a Gaussian distribution on top of the ensemble members on the simplex. As the diagram shows, the center of the distribution corresponds to the mean of the ensemble members on the simplex. The variance of this distribution is indicative of the model uncertainty because this measure of spread tells us how much the individual ensemble members agree with each other. A practical metric to find the model uncertainty is something like the mutual information between the probability distributions of each of the ensemble members. We had defined the total uncertainty to be the combination of data uncertainty and model uncertainty. Therefore, we can deduce the data uncertainty as the difference between the total uncertainty 
and model uncertainty. Well, that's it for now. And if you have any questions on this, fire away in the comments section.